Welcome guys. I'm going to introduce you the course Probability and Statistics for Engineers. I'm teaching this course for the last 10 years in Zakir Sen College of Engineering and Technology, Aligarh Muslim University, India. Initially thought to provide an online support of lectures to my students who might have missed a few classes or would like to listen again and again for better learning and understanding. But now I would like to extend this to you all guys who are interested to learn the engineering or scientific applications on the basis principles of probability and statistics. This will definitely benefit you all in day-to-day -day life, professional life for technical reasons and also in personal life to understand the randomness of the universe. In general, this course is beneficial to science, engineering or management professionals, but especially to engineers working in mechanical engineering, electrical engineering and biomedical engineering will have a big help after going through this course. This course was planned for with three basic objectives to create understanding about the concept of randomness and probability in systems. It may be engineering system, it may be biomedical system, it may be human system, it may be management or industrial systems. The method of analyzing physical parameters statistically. It may be the data of the effect of medicine on humans. It may be the force parameters on performing any particular cutting task. The wide range of varieties are possible for physical parameters, force, flow rate, effect of medicine, temperature, so and so on. Third objective was to create understanding about the support of probabilistic approach in, in experimental outcomes. Most of the engineers or biomedical engineers or health professionals or scientists, life science persons, they, they, they need some kind of support from a statistics or probability. Uh, to their uh, results or findings. Before introducing the outline of the course, I would like to talk about randomness. Randomness is the basic foundation stone of probability and statistics. Probability starts from the point where randomness occur. Take the example of tossing a coin and tossing a dice. Tossing a coin, there may be two possibilities, either head or tail. Tossing a dice, there are six possibilities. One to six, any number may appear from the side of the cube. For example, a guy says to his fine friend that you always appear randomly to ask for a book. It's not good. What do you infer from this? Is that there is no time for a friend to come? either in early morning or at the lunch time or at the dinner time or at the time of my rest or sleeping, but nothing predictable. When there is no prediction possible, we call this appearance, this occurrence as randomness. If you understand random occurrence, this course will be interesting for you and you may apply in your day-to-day -day life in understanding the system God has made with a wide variety of occurrences from a small amoeba to a big, uh, we can say galaxies or Milky Ways. As per the definition, randomness is nothing but the occurrence that has no pattern, no reason for any deviation from a particular value, no format, no sequence, no series, no relation to the preceding or the succeeding occurrences or events. For example, if you toss a coin, nobody can predict exactly head will appear or tail. But then we say that 
50% chance that head will appear or 50% chance that tail will appear. But there is no relation in general. If head appears, then in the next throw, tail may appear. Anything is possible out of these two fixed possibilities. That is called probability. The number of successful outcome out of all possible outcomes is called probability. This outcome is called occurrence and the possibilities are referred as, all possibilities are referred as source. Here I can say that there are three basic terms, three basic stones on which all probability and statistics rest. One is the source, that is nothing but the domain of all possibilities. Then success, what you expect. Then randomness. There is no relation in one occurrence with the other occurrence. So these are three stones I generally uh, consider for understanding the probability and statistics. Nature has infinite possibilities beyond our imagination. We are very limited to our understanding, our knowledge, our study, what we have got by our experience. That is also limited to scientific discoveries up to the present time. I would like to comment here that random occurrence is nothing but limitation of our mind or we can say that either limitation of vision or understanding, knowledge. However, God knows what is going to happen. Creator of the world, creator of the universe, the reason is that God only knows because of the complete knowledge of the factors affecting the trial and every experiment. We are limited to few factors affecting the experimental performance. When you heat up, the water will boil. So we know only supplying the heat is having an effect on boiling. But there are many other factors. The temperature of the environment, the material of the pot, the airflow uh, in the in the surrounding, the pre-temperature of the water. So there are millions and billions of parameters which we don't know is affecting one particular experiment. That is why in most of the theories, we take some assumptions. We do not read to the complete understanding of the process. Before concluding, any principles, there are assumptions. When there is no theoretical or practical formula is possible for prediction, it is called a random occurrence, a random error, a random appearance. In general, we can say it's randomness. Arriving of a gift from a friend or family on without expectation is called a random occurrence. But I have a slight uh, point, a specific point over here that God does not play dice. But to understand the system, to apply the knowledge, to have the more confidence in our justifications of the answers we find out from the results, from the experiments, from the projects, from implementation of certain ideas, we say that we are 90% sure whether it is going to be successful or 50% sure. This is all, all dependent upon the, the knowledge based on historical experience. So knowledge is affected by experience and experience gives us an understanding to correlate with the probability or randomness. If, we, if it was a coin, I give an example again. If you know all the parameters affecting the flip of the coin and the force applied, we can predict whether it is head or tail. But because knowledge is limited on the ground, nobody can expect, nobody can evaluate, we call it random. So don't be serious. I am rolling back to randomness. Here we want to understand what is probability if you take out a card out of 52 cards, bunch, whether it will be jack, whether it will be uh, a or one or two or three or king or queen, 
So this is all randomness we call. But to know probability, history of the occurrences or the knowledge of the source is important. Two things are very important over here. One is either you have historical data with you, large data which can give you the knowledge what, what probability of occurrence may be or you know the construction of the source. How many balls are there in the box? What colors are there? So that you can predict the probability of occurrence. That is all I wanted to say at this point about probability and randomness. Moving forward, I would like to give you the list of topics which I want to cover or discuss in this particular course so that you would be able to apply the knowledge of probability and statistics in different experimental findings.